I'm Lima Milan. In this video, we're going to look at external sample editor workflows. So Ableton Live has a lot of options in terms of how we can edit and manipulate audio, but sometimes there's other bits of software which might do it in a different way or do some of the features you can't do in Ableton Live that you might need to use. Examples of this might be extreme types of plugins that might not be available in uh, as plugins within Ableton Live or it could be just something that's better at cleaning up audio. Let's say we've got some narration or some singing and there's certain issues we've got with the quality of the audio. Different types of uh, software might do a better job than Ableton Live does. So what we can do is assign a sample editor to take care of files when we press an edit button and allow us to edit it in the other software, but then place it back into our project in the same place on our arrangement or session view. So let's set it up. If we go to preferences and on the file and folder tab, there's a section called sample editor. Mine's already set up, but you may not have anything here to start with. Go to browse, locate in your applications what it is you want to, to use as your sample editor, click open. And then from that point onwards, it will open up in that software when we choose to edit audio in an external editor. So that's that setup. Next thing we want to do is basically find ourselves some audio we want to edit. So let's just grab this percussive loop into here. So at the moment, what we have is a background layer and then this percussive loop. Okay, so the, the two different timbres at this point, that they, they sound interesting, but I want to really try and do something interesting with that loop that I've just brought in. So the edit button lives down here in the sample editor view. Um, at the moment, it's not actually available because I'm using a audio file that's actually part of the library. It's not until I make a new copy of it or consolidate or render it into another uh, brand new file that it will let me do this function. It basically stops you accidentally messing up the content of your library. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on the uh, loop I wanna change. And I'm going to choose the least um, destructive way of rendering this as a new file. So I'm going to use crop. And once I've clicked crop, this is now a new uh, file. It actually lives, if I go to search browser, it actually lives within my uh, project folders and so on. And then I can press this edit button. So if I press edit now, it will open it up in my chosen editor, which is RX8. So. Ableton Live is still there in the background, and this is RX8 here. So if I press play or spacebar in RX8, I'll get to hear that same loop. And let's just go to one of the most obvious things we can do to be creative with this and manipulate it. So I've got a time stretch option here. I can go for maybe, um, let's just go for 200%, and let's keep the the pitch of the actual file at zero. So I'm just going to click the preview to just hear what it sounds like. Okay, so I'm going to render that. In fact, that's quite a large file. So I'm going to go back a few steps. Let's just go back to Ableton Live for a minute. And I'm going to use the same command, the crop command. I'm just going to take just one of these or a few of these hits and just make it into a smaller file just to save a bit on time and focus a little bit more on these specific events. So I've cropped it again to do this. I, I changed the start and end markers just then. Um, I can go to edit, open this particular file up in um, RX8. And in RX8, it has like a, a browser style tab system. So you can see all these different um, run-throughs I've done with this file to make different versions of it so far. Um, so spacebar again to hear it. And now I can go into something like the time stretch again and, and push it a bit further without making an excessively large file that I don't want to use uh, the, the majority of. So I'm going to go to just audition this. Okay, so it's gone from sounding like a percussive sound in this case to some ride cymbals. Um, a really nice uh, top end shimmer on that. So if I go to uh, render and commit that, 
what your cho choice of uh, sample editing software needs to be able to do uh, before we move on with this is it must be able to overwrite the file it was given. And that way, that is automatically going to update within Ableton Live when we do it. So I'm going to go to File, Overwrite Original File. It would be different for each different piece of software, but that's the main thing you need to be aware of. And then what we have in the case of this file, if I just pull the clip open so it plays the full duration of this file, because remember, I didn't just edit it in RX8, I extended its actual duration by time stretching it. So if we go back, that file is you know a longer file now, so I need to reveal the rest of it to hear it. So let's just have a listen to that. Okay. So we press Command and Z and go back a few steps. We can go back to that stage and then... Okay, so let's just do another stage of that and we'll do a different process. So the same thing, edit. And then let's find something else that's going to change the properties of this. So this is going to be some pretty severe pitch change. So again, let's just preview this. That's the original. Let's play the modified version. So that last hit sounds really nice now that it's got slightly more uh, percussive transient on it at the beginning and the pitch drop that makes it be emphasized a little bit more. So let's just render that. And then again, overwrite the original file. So if we go back to undo, you see there's something going on here, right? Before I committed my crop to make the original file shorter, this was the first generation of this audio file. And then I cropped it, which made a new file and a new name. But then since then, what I've been doing is opening it up in RX8 and overwriting it each time. So what you need to watch out for when you do use an external sample editor is if you want to make a change to something that you know it might be different than, let's say, the first version, or you may need to go back, it's good to get into the habit of not just alt and drag in to make another copy of the audio being sequenced in your arrangement view. It's really important that you have that same process where you commit the second copy to be a unique file by cropping it, and that way I can open that particular copy that's now a separate file up in my editor. Again, modify it. So let's just, for time's sake, let's just very quickly do exactly the same process to this one. We can overwrite the original file, go back to live. And now in this case, you see that these two files are different. I have the one before I cropped it, which then made the new version. So two copies technically at the same time in the sequence, but they had different file names because they were different renders. So that was the first one. Then I made a crop and then I opened that one up in RX8. And stretch that one out a lot more as well. So that's just one of the things you need to watch out for here is if you're going to send these files to and from this other piece of software is that it is technically overwriting the same file every time it passes back and forth. So if you want to make another alternate modification to it, make a copy of it in, uh, in Ableton Live and then commit it to render by using crop so a new file is generated and then you can safely work on the newer version of that file as well. In this video, we've looked at external sample editors, how we can set them up in Ableton Live, how we can move files from Ableton Live into the external sample editor, the ways we have to make sure we overwrite the original files to make those commit and happen within Ableton Live, and then also the process of making a second copy and rendering that using crop to make sure that the new modified version doesn't replace the older file.